Are you ready to take control of your web hosting and server management like never before? Look no further, because today on Hosting and Stuff, we're going to introduce you to Virtual Min, the ultimate web hosting control panel on the robust and secure platform Alma Linux. In this segment, we're going to explore the system requirements for setting up Virtual Min on Alma Linux 8. It's important to ensure your environment meets these criteria to get the most out of your web hosting experience. RAM and virtual CPUs. While it's possible to set up virtual min with two gigabytes of RAM, it's recommended to have a minimum of four gigabytes for smoother performance and stability. Allocate at least two virtual CPUs to handle server tasks efficiently. Linux Distro Alma Linux 8. For this setup, we'll be using Alma Linux 8. Keep in mind that Alma Linux 9 is not supported by Virtual Min at the time of this video recording. For this demonstration, I'll be using a trusted VPS provider called Absolute Hosting. If you're interested in exploring their services, you can find a link in the description below. I should note that this link is an affiliate link, and by using it, you're supporting this channel. Absolute Hosting is not only providing the server for this tutorial, but will also guide you in using the link provided. If you find this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing for more valuable content. Changing the host name. Changing the host name of your VPS might vary depending on your VPS provider. In the case of Absolute Hosting, the process is straightforward and slightly different from other providers. To begin, log into your Absolute Hosting account and select the VPS you plan to use. If you haven't created a VPS yet, you can do so easily. Just follow the link in the description below to pay for the service. Once you've logged in and selected your VPS, the first step is to ensure that the service is stopped. You'll find the Stop button over here. Make sure to click it to turn off the service temporarily. Now, scroll down to the Information section and click on the Edit icon. Here, you'll be able to change the host name of your VPS. The host name typically needs to be associated with a domain you own. In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate using a domain I have with GoDaddy, which is emeagaming.com. However, in your case, you should replace this with a domain name that you own. In the hostname text box, we'll add server1.emeagaming.com or your domain name. Then click on the Confirm button. Keep in mind that the specific steps to change the hostname might differ with other VPS providers so always refer to their documentation or support if needed. Okay, the service needs to be started up by pressing the Start button within the Absolute Hosting Service panel. Now that the service is up and running, it's time to connect to your server using PuTTY. There are a few ways to access your server, one of which is using the No VNC console. But in this tutorial, I'll use PuTTY. It's user-friendly, and it allows me to demonstrate settings more clearly. Let's open PuTTY. In the host name or IP address field, enter your server's IP address. You can find this information in the Absolute Hosting Service panel. For example, my IP address is 1002.2.1410.94. Then click Open. PuTTY will ask you to log in. Use root as the username and press enter. Next, it will prompt you for a password. You would have set this password when you initially created the VPS service. Type it in and press enter. Great. We're now logged into our VPS. The first thing we'll do is perform an update. In Alma Linux, you can use either yum or dnf for updates, but for the sake of my personal preference, I'm going to use yum. I'll type yum update in my case. 
If there are updates available, you might need to accept a few prompts by pressing Y and then hitting Enter. Now let's double check if the hostname change we made on the Absolute Hosting website worked correctly. We can do this by opening two configuration files. First, let's open the hosts file using this command. Hostname is correct in the config file. Next, let's open the hostname file using this command, and the hostname is correct. With the hostname verified, we can proceed to install virtualmin. But before that, we need to make sure wget is installed. You can do this with the command. After that, Let's download the virtualmin installation script using the following command. Finally, to start the installation process, the installation commands will be included in the description below for easy copying and pasting. During the installation, you may be prompted to confirm actions by pressing Y. Please note that the installation process may take some time to complete. You can skip this part in the YouTube video and move on to the next section. Once the installation process finishes, we'll have virtual min up and running.
Now that virtual min is installed, you can access the server using the specified IP address and port number. Simply copy and paste it into your browser. A security screen might appear in this case. Click on Advanced and then Proceed. This happens because we haven't set a public SSL certificate with our domain yet, but that's a topic we'll cover in the next video. Type root as the username and enter the password you set for your root account within Absolute Hosting. A wizard should appear to configure the virtual min server. Click Next. On this page, you'll find some options based on your system and your intended use for the virtual min server. For this tutorial, I'm keeping everything as default and clicking Next. I'd recommend clicking Yes on this page if you plan to host emails for virus protection. Similarly, click Yes for spam protection, though keep in mind it may use system resources, and that is the reason why we are using 4 gigabytes of RAM. On the database page, we'll keep everything as default. You can set a database password on this page, but I'll keep the generated password. It's crucial to keep this password secure because it could compromise the server if someone gains access to it. In the name server settings, remove server1 and add ns1, then tick skip check for resolvability and click next. We'll cover this setting in more detail in the next video. Once the wizard is completed, you can proceed through the optional features by clicking Next. On this page, you can select whether passwords should be encrypted or left in plain text. I strongly recommend leaving it on only store hashed passwords for security. You can select the amount of RAM allocated for databases. Let's keep it at the default setting. Now, it's asking where the SSL certificate should be stored. Again, I'd recommend keeping it at the default setting. With that, the wizard is completed. You can click Finish now. The next step would be to add a virtual server, but we'll leave that for the next video when we configure the name server. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. Stay tuned for the next video where we'll dive into configuring the name server. See you next time.